Hello and welcome back. Okay, what if I told you that a lot of our language use is actually repetitive? And by repetitive I mean that it is formulaic. What is formulaic language? Why is it important? And how can we look for formulaic sequences in corpora? Well, that is exactly the topic of this video. But before defining formulaic sequences, let me just start off with this quote. I know, it's a bit long, but just bear with me please. It is really insightful and it will set the ground for the following discussion. So let's read it together, shall we? Okay, so the quote reads, Native speakers do not exercise the creative potential of syntactic rules to anything like their full extent. The fact is that only a small proportion of the total set of grammatical sentences are native-like in form, in the sense of being readily acceptable to native informants as ordinary, natural forms of expression, in contrast to expressions that are grammatical, but are judged to be unidiomatic, odd, or foreignisms. Whew. Right? A lot of information. So, let me just highlight some of the keywords for you. And well, to simplify things, what this means is that, even though native speakers are perfectly capable of generating an infinite set of grammatical sentences, in theory, in reality and in actual language use, they seem to prefer but a small proportion of the range of different grammatical sentences. And in other words, they have a way of saying things, right? And just because something is grammatical, it does not mean that it is used or that it is native-like in form, right? So that is why they are judged as unidiomatic or odd or weird way of saying things. Let me just illustrate the point with this example. Say that uh, you're in a meeting and uh, you want to leave early. Maybe you have a date with your special someone. <laughs> now, would you say something like, I'm sorry, I must leave early today, or a premature exodus is mandatory for me today. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about this one. Or say that someone wants to buy a house. Would he or she say, I want to buy this house? Or becoming the owner of this house is what I want. Or it is my wish to acquire this house in exchange for money. Mm, yeah, right. You see the point. Even though sentences to the right are grammatical and any speaker of English is capable of understanding them or producing them, I'm willing to bet all my money that you find them strange or an idiomatic way of saying things. Well, who the hell talks like that, <laughs> right? Unlike sentences to the left, which again I'm sure you'll find a uh, natural or idiomatic way of saying things. So this is the point exactly. Just because something is grammatical, it does not mean that it is used in reality. And it seems that speakers do not uh, exploit their grammatical powers to the fullest. And indeed, corpus data suggests that, or shows that there is a strong tendency towards repetition in natural speech. And if you do not believe me, that's fine. You do not have to take my word for it. Maybe you would believe a Keynesian K-man who suggests this exactly. Apple corpus evidence shows that there is a strong tendency towards repetition or structural repetition in natural speech. And one argument is that memory is sensitive to recency as well as frequency. So we are more likely to repeat things that we hear quite often or things that we have heard recently. Okay? Now, in addition to structural repetition, corpus data suggests also that a large proportion of language use is formulaic. So what are formulaic sequences? They are defined as word strings that are stored and retrieved whole from memory at the time of use, rather than generated anew on each occasion. So, what this means is that formulaic sequences are multi-word sequences that are stored as chunks in the memories of speakers. And when the time calls to use such strings, speakers do not have to generate them from scratch, rather they have them readily available and they simply retrieve them whole from memory. Let's illustrate the points with my fancy illustration here. And for the time being, let us stick to the dictionary and grammar approach or model of linguistic knowledge. So as you know, this model suggests that what speakers know is basically words and uh, idiomatic expressions. And they combine elements in the lexicon, that is the words, etc., with rules to generate a grammatical sentence. But for the case of formulaic sequences, it is proposed that speakers do not have to generate them from scratch, 
rather they have them stored as chunks in memory. And when the time calls to use these expressions, they simply have to retrieve them all from memory without computing them or generating them by roots. Okay? Now, I think I know what you're thinking. Maybe you're thinking of fixed idioms, things like by and large, all of a sudden, etc. But from leg sequences are more than that. They're not just idioms, or they're not just fixed idioms. They could be also collocations, things like a little while and not small while. Uh, that, uh, that sounds weird. Uh, binomial expressions, things like uh, bread and butter, not butter and bread, or rock and roll, not uh, roll and rock. Uh, it's cringy, yeah, I know. Uh, phrasal verbs, you know what those are, and lexical bundles, and these are really interesting, so I'll dedicate a video to them, and to them only. And yeah, that would be the next video. So <laughs> stay tuned if you want. Uh, right, but the main idea here is that formulaic sequences are not just fixed idioms, they could also be collocations, etc. And as you already know, idioms are not always fixed, so there are semi-fixed idioms. Things like, throw someone under the bus. Right? As you know, part of this idiom is fixed and part of it is not. Let us consider these examples that I've taken from the coca corpus. So as you can see, part of the idiom is fixed under the bus, and part of it is not. Things like the tense or the aspect of the verb, and also the object or the complement of the verb. So as you can see, he throws RP under the bus. I'll vote for a president who doesn't throw me under the bus. Criticizing and throwing the man under the bus etc. Now, just between brackets, let us consider how this applies uh, to the dictionary and grammar model of linguistic knowledge. Now, as you know, this idiom is non-compositional. That is, you cannot possibly predict the meaning of the idiom from the combination of its parts or from the meaning of its words, right? So, it seems only logical to store it in the lexicon because of its idiosyncratic meaning. But as you can see, part of the idiom seems to be subject to the grammatical component. Things like throw or the object. So how does this fit with the whole dictionary and grammar model of linguistic knowledge? I'll leave you to think about that. This is not the time to, to talk about this, but if this strikes your interest, check out the, the link in the description down below. I think that you'll enjoy that. But anyway, coming back to the topic of this video, as I've said, formulaic sequences, are not just fixed idioms, they're more than that. And finally, and I promise this is for definitions, let's see how Nettinger and De Carico classified uh, formulaic sequences, or what they termed lexical phrases. So they divided them into four classes. The first class are polywords, and these are phrases that operate as single words, and these are fixed, things like, for the most part, in a nutshell, by the way, etc. The second class are institutionalized expressions. These again are also fixed and they do not vary, but they are sentence length, they are continuous. Things like, how do you do? Nice meeting you. Uh, how you doing? <laughs> uh, just a side joke for, uh, for fans of friends. They could be for, uh, the third class, sorry, are phrasal constraints, and these allow for some variation. Things like a, something ago, a day ago, a year ago, a month ago, etc. And finally, sentence builders, and these allow for insertion and variation more than phrasal constraints. Things like, I think that's something. Have you ever something? Okay, now this is for definition as I promised. So let's talk about why uh, from the sequences are important. Well, as we've seen, a large proportion of language or language use is actually formulaic. So it is evident that identifying and studying formulaic sequences is really very important. And in context of uh, language learning and language teaching, uh, evidence or research suggests that formulaic sequences contribute largely to fluency as well as to communicative competence or to achieving native-like uh, proficiency. So. And also, sorry, uh, since a large proportion of language is actually formulaic, then it is better to teach formulaic sequences than to teach isolated words and grammatical rules and 
just simply combine words uh, using rules. So it is definitely more interesting and more beneficial for learners to identify from like sequences and teach them from like sequences. All right, now enough with the blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Let's move to the more fun parts of the video, yeah, which is looking for from like sequences in Cobra. As you see, as you see uh, we go back again to our good old friend Ant Kunk, and more specifically to identify from like sequences, we need to use the clusters or n-grams tool. So what this tool does is that it identifies or it extracts the most frequently used multi-word sequences. And here in the n-gram size, you can uh, select the number of words that you'd like your sequence to, to be made of. Okay? As you see, I chose the n-gram size or the number of words of my sequence to uh, four, so that Antkong will only give me four word sequences. I set the minimum frequency to 20 and the range of five, that is the, the expression should occur in at least five different texts. Okay? I'm using the open American National Corpus and more specifically I'm using the spoken part of the open uh, American National Corpus. And as you can see, I got quite a few hits. Things like, I don't know, I don't think, you know it's, uh, I think it's, etc. And these are really very frequent. So if we have a look at their normalized frequencies, I don't know appeared 1,550 1, times per million words. I don't think occurred 471 times per million words etc. So, as you can see, they are really very frequent in spoken language, or at least in this corpus. And if you scroll further down the list, you get more from like sequences, things like it's kind of, a lot of people, uh, don't know what, things like that, or something like that, etc. Right. You could also have more fun and experiment with the n-gram size. Let's go crazy and let's expand this to, or increase it to 7. And let's look for seven word sequences and see if we can find certain frequent uh, seven word sequences. And well, if we do that, how about that? There are a, uh, yeah, a range of different seven word uh, sequences that you can find in spoken language. So things like, to nobody's surprise, it's been nice talking to you, right? Well, it was nice talking to you, uh, similar. I don't know if that's something. Uh, what else? Uh, don't know if you've ever watched my videos. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that if you have never watched my videos. <laughs> yeah, just yeah, cringy jokes, I know. I don't have a lot of... I don't know if it was... etc. So these are what you have seen previously as sentence builders, right? And well, this is the idea. If you want to look for from like sequences, you can use the clusters or engrams tool you could uh, yeah, control the engram size and you can look for four word, five word, six word, or go crazy, seven word uh, sequences and see what you'll get. And upon identifying uh, from like sequences, uh, as you've seen, that could be really helpful, not only in context of uh, language teaching, but in studying uh, language phenomena in general, right? Uh, now, for the next video, as I said, I'll talk about lexical bundles, and these are a type of formulaic sequences. And I think that they are really interesting, so they deserve a video of their own. And uh, hopefully I'll see you there. So, thanks again for watching. As always, any comments, any feedback, they're always uh, welcomed. Feel free to leave comments in the comment section down below. If you want to email me, uh, email is in the description. And uh, yeah, stay safe. Thanks for watching again. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao.